Hey there guys, Wandering Kid here. I figured I'd just do a quick uh, one-off as to what I've been doing in the meanwhile uh, while I've been waiting for the king to show up and trying to figure out a design that I can get to Duna to rescue Jeb and friends and some of the things I picked up over the Steam Summer, Steam summer Sale and things like that. So I figured I'd show you a few of these things. So obviously one of these games is Hearthstone. Um, I tend to run it around about rank 10. I'm certainly not a legendary player, but I do pretty well. Uh, some of my decks are better than other ones, but so be it. There's plenty of people who YouTube the heck out of this right now, but if you guys are interested in watching me play a couple of rounds, I could certainly do that. So here we have Don't Starve. This is a game I have played the ever-loving heck out of lately. Um, I really like this game, and I just picked up the Reign of Giants DLC. As you can tell here, I was experimenting with uh, some different sizes to try and record in. This one doesn't work so well. This size looks a lot better. Reign of Giants uh, about doubles the difficulty of the vanilla game. And they're coming out with a new DLC called Shipwreck soon, which should be interesting. Uh, it's basically a gathering game. Uh, there's some base building to it, where you get yourself set up and things like that. You're in a world where science and magic are all sorts of screwy. There's a couple of different modes to it, like Adventure Mode, which I beat in Vanilla. And generally the idea is, well, don't starve and don't get caught in the dark. And everything else from there kind of grows from that point. Um, if there's enough interest in it, I would not mind doing some Let's Plays on this. However, it's definitely a long and it's a deep game and it goes for a while. Um, and there is a lot of... It's interesting to the player, but not necessarily to the people watching as they just wander around in circles collecting stuff. But, in general, I definitely recommend this game. If you haven't played it before, I picked it up on the Steam Summer Sale, and I have not been unhappy with it. Here we have Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is a dungeon crawler. It's kind of standard in that aspect. It's got some unique aspects to it, though, which make it kind of interesting. It's got a very limited inventory system for starters. You're not going to be doing a lot of healing. It's a lot, although there are characters that can do it, they're kind of rare and they're weak otherwise. Um, your cleric is kind of pointless other than for healing, so you kind of have to bounce back and forth. Uh, some of the dungeons, it just doesn't make sense to do it in. As you travel through the dungeons, you'll find different pieces of gear, things of that nature. Uh, but one of the big things about it is that the more your characters adventure, the crazier they get. So you'll pick, get things like kleptomania, masochism where they'll only unstress out uh, from being whipped in the church things like that and it's not just a health bar but you've also got a stress meter and the more they stress out the worse things can get and after a certain level of stress you start getting permanent maladies and stuff like that so what ends up happening is, is you have to balance your time in the dungeons and how much light there is and things like that there's a lot of little things going on that make it kind of interesting for example, they've got a torch level in here where the lower it is, the better the loot it is, but the more your characters will stress out and the more you can get hurt. And there's a couple of different strategies to playing it. It's an interesting game, I find. I probably haven't played it to the depth that would really be required to do any kind of trading manual on it, but it wasn't bad. Big Pharma is a logistics game. The primary purpose of the game is to be able to develop cures and sell them. It's wrapped up in a medical theme and it has a business impetus to give you drive to get ahead and fall behind. Its lose condition is primarily ending up so deeply in debt that you can't get ahead of your own loans while the market gets saturated. It has a number of different things going on. For example, it's got a number of different ingredients. These ingredients have different cures and side effects attached to them. You have to research them and find them. Once you have a cure, it builds out to different levels of cure depending on its saturation levels. Saturation is how the game controls the lo logistics and the build so that you have some challenge to it. The research tree, as you can see, is pretty in-depth. It takes a while to get through it. This is the business portion of the wrapper. The game is still being developed. One of the things I realized when I went in to do this recording was this new column here of the average uh, saturation level the cure has on the market right now because that drives down prices. So that's nice to know. 
I've spent a lot of time in this game, and it's got a really good one-more-turn mentality to it that 4 a.m. has shown up a little too often. Talos, or the Talos Principle. Um, this is an interesting puzzler. Um, there's a couple of guy dang it moments in here. But in general, it's a 3D puzzle game, and it uses a couple of simple techniques in some really interesting ways. Basically, boxes, fans, some laser light that you redirect, things like that. Here you can see an example of the gameplay. I'm not going to show you too much of it, and I'm waffling around a little bit, but like the box can fly up on fans, things like that. All of this is explained in some of the tutorials. It gets more interesting later as to how to get all this put together. This is actually one of the final levels of the game. And as you can see, it's not quite as simple as it looks. It's an interesting game, though. I found it to be very curious. Um, the philosophy that's in it, though, is actually very interesting if you get into it. And it can be a lot of fun to check out. If you enjoy 3D puzzlers, I recommend giving this one a go if you can ever find it on the Steam Summer Sale. Uh, this is definitely not one I'd do another playthrough on, though. Uh, once on a puzzler like this is enough. It doesn't have enough variability like Big Pharma does. But it was definitely interesting. Star Ruler 2 is an amazing game. There is so much going on in this game. It's incredibly deep, very detailed. I really like this game. Just for starters, listen to this music. And not just the intro music on the opening screen. This game has got tons going on. It's 3D space. Uh, it does kind of lay out like 2D, but in generally it's 3D space. Your basic objective is to colonize worlds, build up a star empire. It's a 4X game. Your worlds have a lot going on. Your worlds have to be upgraded to different levels, similar to, say, Galactic Civ, which we'll get to. And that opens space on the ground to build new things and stuff like that. But what they need is they need trade from other planets to do it. For example, to go from level 0 to level 1, any planet needs water and food. Most planets will survive supply 1. Diplomacy is the one place I'm not too happy about this game. It's very getting constantly involved, very clicky, very pay attention to it constantly. It's very naggy is really what it is. And part of that's because of the card system where the influence goes by. Research is huge. Look at this tree. It branches in 14 different directions. You can get anywhere from anywhere. It's just monstrous. And all of these things matter. It's not like some Civ games where you get one thing and by the time you've built a ship with it, it's gone. Which is awesome. Speaking of building ships, this thing is great. You can build a template for a ship. These ships have different parts that you put into them. Drivetrain, armor, weaponry, hyperdrives, uh, ammo stores. You can put in long-range guns. You can have uh, ammo support ships with your fleet. And you can give them different rules to abide by. Of course, you have the standard, you know, planetary screens and stuff like that just to keep things intelligent for you, just to make things easy enough to find. And if you go into, say, my capital city on this particular game, you can see it was level two. It's got a bunch of things coming into it. There's a community with built ships uh, for your perusal that you can use at your whim. Star Roller 2 is just an amazing game. I wish I had enough time to really dig into this thing. Galactic Civ 3, on the other hand, was a bit of a disappointment. I played the heck out of Galactic Civ 2. Um, I, I abused that game. I enjoyed it thoroughly. But it's got a lot of your old bits and pieces. It's moved up in how clean it plays. It's definitely an improvement on Gal Civ 2. However, a lot of my old complaints about Gal Civ 2 still exist here in Gal Civ 3. One, you blow through the research tree so fast. When you build things, they're outdated by the time you've built the ship. Um, the gameplay is very intense. It's very war-oriented. There's not a lot of build-out. If you love Gal Civ 2 and you want more of it in a cleaner setup, Gal Civ 3 was awesome. 
Um, it just doesn't have the staying power. If you're going to pick up one 4X game, I would recommend Star Ruler 2, not Galship 3. While Galship 3 is better laid out, cleaner tutorials, Star Ruler 2 is a lot more in-depth and a lot more interesting. Gemcraft Chasing Shadows. This is a tower defense game with a very large map. There is a lot going on in here. Each one of these little hexagonal bricks has seven different maps in it. And on these maps, you can choose to turn your levels on and off. You have different abilities down below that you can turn on and off to make them harder. You can spend certain things to try and get better drops for other places. It's really in-depth for a tower defense game, really. It's got things like this, where you've got your skills. Skills will improve certain spells you have, improve certain types of towers you have, give you certain spells, let you have certain abilities, things like that. On top of that, you have your talisman, which is a bunch of passive bonuses to things like damage against particular creature types and other items. These will drop as you fight on maps. And you have achievements and you have some journey notes and stuff like that. And here we'll just start up a quick map so you can see what it kind of looks like. The loading screens can take a moment or two, but that happens. There's plenty of gameplay online. Now this is one of the more advanced maps. In the center is a area where mobs will spawn out of, and you'll notice the pathing goes off the map as well. Up on top, I have different spells, and a mana supply. That mana supply builds crystals over here on the right, and it's also used to build tower emplacements and things like that. It's a little different than most tower defenses because instead of building a laser tower or this tower or that tower, what you do is you have nine different types of crystals you can use, inside of a generic tower. You can build traps, you, uh, which are on the ground as people walk over them and they get hit by them. You can build towers which shoot at things in a certain range. There's a number of different items in here. It's an interesting game to play. Unfortunately, I don't think it's an interesting game to ha watch somebody else play. Uh, there's plenty of other people who have done tons of these things online. If you're interested, I recommend you go see them. The games, if you're in a tower defense, it can be a lot of fun, and eventually it just kind of drags. But I'm still having some fun with it. So, The Long Dark is a survival game in the truest sense of the word. It's not about fighting off tons of creatures, other than occasional wolves who annoy you. It's about surviving in the Canadian wilderness after an aircraft crash. And, as you can tell, people die. And you scrounge. There's a massive inventory system, which is the primary driver of this game, because you can only carry so much weight without exhausting yourself. And, unlike a lot of other places, water is heavy. And they accept that. But everything from food to tools to your clothing, everything weighs. Um, it's a very deep game, and it's still an alpha. When I actually get to story mode, it should be a very interesting game. But for now, it a, was a fun little sandbox to play in. It a lot, goes a lot further than I played it through. I got through Carter Dam and I killed Fluffy, if anybody's familiar with him. However, I haven't gotten to the other towns and things of that nature. So, it's an interesting game. If you're curious, check it out. So for anybody not familiar with Mountain Blade, and the newest installment is called Warband, it's a medieval style fighting game with no magic. It's trade, it's swords, it's armor, it's shields, it's lances that work, it's horses that actually behave themselves-ish. It's still working on it. I remember many years ago uh, when Mountain Blade was still an alpha and I got involved in it. It was interesting then. It still kind of is. It's got everything from build your own armies up to all sorts of reports on everything. You travel to different places, you talk to nobles, you get involved in some tournament fights, things like that. In general, the gameplay doesn't change too much. Uh, there is some strategy to it when you have enough troops, archers, skirmishers, things like that. You won't get there until you get really involved in the game. So if you're not interested in the core gameplay mechanics, 
which is basically horseback and foot fighting with swords and arrows and things like that. It's not something you'll enjoy. It's not something you'd want to play heavily continuously, but it's a fun little game to pick up and put down now and then. Banished is a town city building game. It reminds me a bit of Caesar without multiple levels. I found it to be an interesting take on the genre. There's walkers and things like that. The map is definitely important. As you can see, you can get a very large map. I realize it doesn't really mean anything until you know what's going on, but each one of those tree trunks is a single square and there's a lot of room. You start off with a small little village of a couple of banished folk, and then you build it up into a city. Um, loading up a larger city now so you have an idea of what a more complete city would look like. It gets detailed and controlling your supplies, what's going where, trade with other cities, keeping your food supplies up, all of these things start becoming very interesting. It's definitely an efficiency style game, but I found it uh, kind of cured that urge that I used to have wondering when Caesar 4 or one of those would come out. So it was nice. I definitely recommend picking it up if you're bored. Finally, last but not least is Antharian. I want to put a disclaimer out, folks. I was given a key to Antharian by the developers, or by one of their promoters anyway, to check the game out and possibly put up a Let's Play on it. So I will be doing that at some point. I'll at least put up one or two episodes for him for it, since they were nice enough to give me a key to check it out. It's a very, very old school RPG hack and slash. Uh, it's got some neat bits and pieces to it, but I have one major aggravating complaint, which is a quality of life complaint. It's that each one of the characters have unique inventory. So trying to sell, buy, deal with things like that is a real pain in the butt. But the general storyline is you've got four prisoners after a very, very large and detailed uh, character creation screen who are going to break out and find out that the town above them is dead and they get to escape. And there's a lot of things going on. You've got spells, you've got alchemy, you've got all sorts of things going on in this game. So, if you guys are interested in uh, watching me play any of these games or stuff like that, let me know. I'm kind of doing this episode here as an experiment to see what kind of reactions you guys have to it and what kind of ideas you might have, and to see if you're interested in any of these pieces. And, well, if nothing else, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'll say it at the end, the king is coming eventually. I don't know when. It's just time. And every time I get a raid, my FPS goes down to 9, so that takes ages on that. And I'm still figuring out what kind of ship I'm sending off to Duna to rescue Jeb and Buddies. So, I will see you for the next episode of whichever one comes first. And as always, thanks for watching.